Hello there and welcome to Tea Time where we bring you the hottest, the latest and the juiciest celebrity news in Nigeria, Africa and the entire globe. I'm Tokumbo Tairo and I'm here with the unbending and the unyielding Lakwe Banjo and Ife Oshinkeye. Hi guys. Hello. What's up Tokumbo? Um, anything new? It's Friday. Yes. For once. For once, what? You're happy? I'm so happy. But you always say, you know, it never applies to us. Yeah, but I don't know, this Friday I've got a different Friday feeling. Okay, do you have a hot date tonight then? No, I don't have a hot day actually, but I've got a hot weekend coming right up. Really? Yeah, I'm going to have a really good weekend. What? There's another um, um, wedding you have, you have to attend? No, not this time it's not a wedding, this time it's a memorial. Okay. But I'm going to go to the African Shrine on Sunday okay. and watch Femi Kuti play. So okay, okay. I'm looking forward to that. Please, can you go with the cameraman and get him <laughs> No, <in> I'm <laughs> not doing that <laughs> at all. If uh, you Definitely wanted to say not. something, because you were looking at her like, what on earth is she talking about? No, no, I didn't want to say anything. I was just wondering if you guys saw Speed Darlington's post. <laughs> You're like his that. number one fan. Fan, no, yes, I just, think so. No, this is crazy because we're talking about, um, what's the name of that rapper that um, filmed the sex tape? That rapper that filmed the sex tape in America that is um, known for doing crazy um, something. Oh, book, book, oh, book oh my something. goodness. Um, what are you talking about? The guy that always does stunts and posts it on social media. He's about it on the Yes. Show. Brooke. Brooke, not Brooke's Brooke or something. No, yeah, oh my God. Right, let's fast forward to. Yes, well, I want to know who this guy is. We talk about Dalentine him all the time. He posted on Instagram yesterday and he was getting oral. Oh my god! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It okay. was good, and then he, he was filming it, but you, we couldn't see the face of the lady, but we could tell. Has what it was been going taken on. down? And he was telling Instagram, "Take it down. You can't see. You, you don't take it down. You can't see the girl's face. You don't even know what she's." doing he used a lot of explicit words but i think you guys should check it out i thought it was very like no, instagram i bet you instagram would have taken it down by now well well i'm gonna go have a look at that definitely mm -hmm. <laughs> it's on his page mm -hmm. what's his instagram handle speed Dallin tv or something oh, okay i'll be watching that okay so um on to the business of the day. Uh, we've got Scoop on David O, Slick Woods, M.I. Abaga and Funke Akindele. We're starting with American fashion model Slick Woods, who reportedly went into labor after walking for Rihanna's show during New York Fashion Week. OK, so it's like she herself hasn't come out to say this is what no, happened. She actually hasn't responded, but you okay. don't expect her to if she's gone into labor. She's probably, mm -hmm. you know, busy with her baby. Um, mm -hmm. But I really like her name, Slick Woods. And also, um, you know, yeah, she's but... like the face for Fenty Beauty. Okay. Um, and she's got a very different kind of model look. Her baby, well, I don't know, her boyfriend, the yeah. father of her child, yeah. is also a 27-year-old yeah. model, yeah, model as well. Yeah. Um, but in this case, she's her, the reason why it's so interesting is that she was walking the runway and like 10 minutes later she went backstage and she went into labour. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those stories that you hear but you never actually believe. Exactly. So you can imagine what people backstage were feeling like. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in a more endearing empowering way yeah i suppose she had her baby doing what she loves most and doing exactly a job and you know yeah. and there's been other models that have actually i can't remember who the model was. She's even on this one there was another model there that, that was her baby yeah, yeah. And then, no that was pregnant was pregnant as well right but there was another model that recently okay, that, brought out her baby oh i see um, she was doing like a bikini shoot so she okay. wore like a gold bikini her baby mm -hmm. wore a green one okay. um and she was breastfeeding her baby as she walked out onto the runway okay. so i think there's like a whole new emergence of you can be a model have a baby you can mm -hmm. be a model and do what you like but sort of Slick Woods actually <coughs> stole the show, you know, during this, um, yeah, because like she was in heels and yeah, everything. Yeah, she was in heels and she was heavily pregnant. Pregnant, nine I mean, months nine pregnant, months, they yeah, said. So. Ife, what's your take? Um, I just think um, what Rihanna is doing is really, really very commendable, commendable. because okay. she, she, during a Savage and the Fenty New York Fashion Week runway walk, she brought out different women of different shapes and sizes and it's just like celebration of women mm -hmm. and empowering women and all of that so I think it's very commendable and um, back to Slick Wood I think whoop whoop I think she's one of the women proving that look no matter what like we were talking about the other day that you shouldn't use your pregnancy as a reason not to lift the finger. Mm. So this is someone that was nine months pregnant and she was still doing a job and she went into labor right after doing a job. So yeah, yeah you have to commend our professionalism and mm -hmm. our strength and courage. Absolutely. Yeah. And also just on the flip side of that, this doesn't mean that women that can't be bothered to lift a finger or don't want to go to work, because everyone's pregnancy is really different. I was going to um, say... So I, I think yeah. sometimes there's a lot of, like, <laughs> pregnant shaming that goes mm -hmm. on, because, I mean, there's some women that actually can't do anything and become, mm -hmm. you know, put on a lot of weight and yeah. get really heavy and mm -hmm. retain water. 
Um, and you know, you see people like this, and that, that make everyone else that hasn't been through the pregnancy process. How was your own pregnancy listen, like? I've when never you, been you, pregnant. <laughs> so Just for the record. Yes. Yeah, uh, come on now, like where you told us, you know, the other time, didn't you? That I have a child. No, that when you were pregnant, you liked a peanut butter. You had. <laughs> I never said that, for the record. <laughs> I've never had a child. I'm oh. looking forward to having a child. Um, and, yeah, as I was saying, that I think, yeah, everyone's pregnancy experience is different, so that mm -hmm. no one should use this as a kind of, oh, yeah. everyone can do it. I mean, just yeah. enjoy your pregnancy. All right. Up next is the story on David O, who cancels U.S. tour in order to return to the NYSC camp. So, very commendable. A lot of people have been commending him. If mm -hmm. I let me start with you. Um, actually... Very commendable. David really? Doe is um is um showing some sense of responsibility and some patriotism. Okay. Because All right. Okay. Yeah. You need to wrap wrap it up because like Lakme is dying to really come down hard on yeah, you. Yeah, because um she's <laughs> is supposed to be making a lot of money doing right this now. tour, mm -hmm. but um there's been some conflict with schedule and all of mm -hmm. that. So he has decided to come back to Nigeria mm -hmm. and um focus on his NYC. Is it not because he got accused that you know there was some kind of preferential treatment that Lakme has been saying all along? Um, I don't think that because I saw something okay, along yeah, the could, lines. That could yeah. be you a contributory yeah, Can I just factor. say something really quickly? Right, I get what you're saying. It's good. It looks good. He's doing. He's paying everybody the lip service. So I've come. <laughs> I've cancelled my tour, <laughs> which is by oh, the dear. way, the other day we found out that he actually cancelled his tour because of Hurricane Florence, mm -hmm. not because he was coming back to do his NYC. NYC. Now let me just set it up oh, for you. He cancelled yeah. one tour. Yeah, but he's cancelled his entire. America tour now. Yeah, he yeah. cancelled one tour for Hurricane Florence. Okay, so that's fine, but that's the real reason he's not going to America. Now, listen to this, no. right? Okay, fine, whatever. Maybe she has some inside information. Whatever. Let's listen Re to what she Whatever has to say. you think is what you think, but what I'm trying to say is that the reason why this is all happening mm -hmm. is because there's rumours of preferential treatment. Okay. Kemi Adelshaw has currently been taken to court over her NYSE mm -hmm. alleged fraud, um, fraudulent certificate. certificate. Mm -hmm. His uncle, mm -hmm. who is currently running for the governor of Oshun State, yeah. is also under fire about his certificate, whether or not it existed or not. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows he went to Babcock and graduated in whichever year he graduated. Mm -hmm. And he's been public about his NYSE thing. Mm -hmm. He's gotten mm -hmm. a lot of backlash and a lot of praise for it. Yeah. And Actually, everybody else is sitting in camp and doing what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. and he's going on tour making money. Now, going back to what you were saying last time about, oh, people are only allowed exemptions if it's for work and medical, right? Mm -hmm. I went and did some digging. It's actually only allowed when it's medical. So him, you know, swanning off to America for work for business, yeah. is actually generating money. Mm -hmm. So, no, that's not a good enough reason not reason. to be there. Okay. And obviously... He doesn't want this 10 years down the line to come back and say, well, we knew we've got pictures of you mm -hmm. in America when mm -hmm. everybody else was in NYC, NYC camp. Yeah. He's thought five steps ahead. Mm -hmm. That's what I commend him for. Okay. For actually thinking, actually, okay. no, this is going to affect me later and I'm going right. to come back. Okay, That's the reason. let me quickly come to you, Ife, because it's like you didn't agree when she was no, saying uh, that the reason why look, he left was not for the... You're saying um, it with full confidence and courage, like you know this as a fact. So no, it's not a fact. So We're you. all... No, I'm not saying it like it's a fact. So I'm it's, only so commending... So we both don't know why no, he came No, but you're speculating. Or yeah. are you saying it as a fact? I'm because not saying it as a fact. So you're I'm only saying that, okay, this could be the reasons why. And I even said, okay, okay. his backlash could be a contributory factor. So why don't you believe that but, what she's saying could be true? But the preferential treatment yeah. and the fact that you need to go for work can be used it's for not. somebody. That's what she's saying. Not. She's digged and she's saying the okay. only ground is medical. The but that's why you have medical. a one on one conversation with the DG mm -hmm. of NYSC. Yeah. You yeah. Don't so get I, anything yeah, done. Yeah, then there's not yeah, technical anymore. That's what I'm trying to say to you, that the reason... That on, of course but, there would be exemptions. Can I just, can you, hang on a second. We're in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Everyone doesn't do things by the book here. If we're going according to the book... That's what she's saying. It says you're only allowed to do it for medical, medical. reasons. But we all know that people go there and make things up, mm -hmm. and people say, oh, you know, can you just help me out? And okay, that's I what I mean by preferential realistic. treatment. I want us to be realistic. That's what I mean yeah. by preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. yeah, that just it's because you sweet-talk the DG mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're not getting preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. If you're going by the rules, which applies to every... The DG. When you're she's seeing the, the obvious, and she's letting you go while she's seeing obvious like allowed, you have to which is go not allowed oh, okay. it is not allowed well, if, if let's put it in your context now let's say for example hypothetically you had to do nyc all over again mm -hmm. can you re picture yourself having this conversation with the dg saying you wanted to go you know to the u.s because if I'm of a blah, famous blah, blah, blah. musician no not I'm a famous i mean as an ordinary person. ordinary person oh then that will make no sense to the dg 
But now it's getting preferential treatment. Yes, we all agree that it's getting preferential treatment. Well, you didn't agree. That's what she was trying to say. I didn't agree. No, that's why I'm arguing with you like this. No, I do agree that it's getting preferential treatment. But that's such a development. On the grounds of very, very, very valid reasons. That's my own point. No, but regardless, this is why we're having this discussion. Because initially you said it's not preferential treatment. You're allowed to leave if it's for work or medical reasons. And when you said that, that really interested me. Yeah, and I gave you and I gave you an example. Exactly, because you said he's working, we know that it's for his work and blah, blah, blah. And I said, actually, that might make sense because people that live and work abroad mm -hmm. can come back and do the NYC and say, look, I've really got to go back for this work thing, mm -hmm. which made a lot of sense. So I went and did some digging myself and okay. said, actually, this might make a lot of sense. No, I'll go back and do more digging. Do more digging, definitely, yeah. because you're only allowed to be exempted from NYC on medical grounds, which is why people come up with all sorts of reasons mm -hmm. to be excused or to live in better conditions or to be posted to certain states mm -hmm. for medical reasons. Now, you're not allowed to leave NYC camp, I'm not talking mm -hmm. about the NYC process, mm -hmm. the three-week orientation camp mm -hmm. for work reasons. I know it's not only medical reasons, though. Okay. I can't state the other reasons, Well, I know it's not just I've spoken to a, a general in the okay. army that does NYC. All right, guys, said otherwise, uh, so. we need to take a quick break. Uh, when we return, we'll be bringing you a story on popular Nollywood actress Funke Akindele. Stay here and stay tuned. Who am I to go record? I'm like, after everything I've done... Most of us are fighting for our personal interests. Fire started exactly 10 I was in a DJ. I've been in construction, a mechanic. I have several children. If entertainment is going to be our second biggest export in the country now, we do need to invest properly in structure. I don't know where we're heading. Then I'm reminded that Nigeria has been close to the brink on so many other occasions, and God has been merciful to pull us back from that brink and save this country. It's a big one, just... Yes. Welcome back. You're watching Tea Time right here on Plus TV Africa. Up next is this headline on Funke Akidele, who talks about her greatest fear in life by saying, I'm afraid of failure and poverty. Okay, so if I let me quickly come to you on this. No, you mm. went to Ife the first time. Sorry? You went to Ife the second, the other story. Yeah. Yeah, so it's me now. No, if I let me come to you on this. <sighs> so <quickly>. annoying. <laughs> Sexism. Sexism. Uh, let's, In the workplace. Yeah, I'm so joking, it's fine. I'll first. just, I'll just no, find that no, being no, annoying. No, I feel you should go Oh, first. come on, it's oh, fine. No, no, no. no oh, no, isn't he being no. very gallant right he now? He's very, unlike some, you some, should take yes, a leap Yes, exactly. Anyway, if you insist, if you insist, I think this story was really interesting because what came to mind was, I mean, she was asked, she was on Instagram and she had that ask me thing that mm -hmm. they do on Instagram. And she was asked what her biggest fear was and she said failure and poverty. And it just sparked something in my head that isn't, well, it depends where you are, it depends mm -hmm. who you are, but mm -hmm. I feel like failure and poverty are usually most people's fears. I mean, what is your, what are your fears? Failure. Right, not poverty, failure. Not poverty, just failure. Yeah, just, but it's one or the other, right? Most people's fears yeah, is one or the other. Yeah, because when you fail, you, you're poor. However, some people say like failing is not actually a bad thing. Like exactly. it's like your first attempt in mm -hmm. life or whatever they said it stands mm -hmm. for. Yeah, because what happens is when failure you... that we're talking about, yeah, not more consistent, yeah, failure. consistent failure, like, or but being a failure in life. Some of the general. most successful people have failed so exactly. many times. Yeah. So, many so times. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Really... So dying as a failure, if you fail and you try again and you get back up, it's cool. But failing completely, like. Mm -hmm. You keep trying and you keep failing, that's the But fear. you see, the way, the way I look at it is someone like Funke that knows that she's got talent. If she fails right now, she should be able to be in that position where pick she feels she can up. exactly pick Having herself. Having said that, though, if we look yeah. at that American guy, the Bill Cosby, um, the other guy... He's that, picking um, himself back up again. Yeah, but only because someone filmed him. Like, he picked himself back up in terms of being able to financially give, but I'm saying he was someone that was famous. He didn't yeah. pick himself back up in the where he where he would have liked to, but mm -hmm. he made sure he got stuff done. So I guess he's not a failure, but exactly. he, he got what he needed to do. He did mm -hmm. his thing. But yeah. I'm saying in terms of being in the industry, he didn't exactly go back and succeed in the industry that he once succeeded in. Yeah, what I'm saying is that as a result of that, he's getting uh, more uh, gigs right now because I, um, apparently he's he's been called on to the NCI. Yeah, I saw that, but yeah. I'm saying that that's not because of him 
making efforts to no, get back up. this is out of sympathy. He's getting those yeah, out he's, of this sympathy. is sympathy. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But he didn't physically go back into the industry and give it like 10 more goes, yeah. which is why I'm saying failure well, is, failure is saying relative. Is failure is very yes, relative. And the thing is, I don't think at that point in time he was interested in getting back into the no, industry. No, he said it. He exactly. said after that he didn't get any more gigs and he was mm -hmm. running out of money. Well, mm -hmm. If he didn't get... Um, if people didn't get sympathetic with the situation, he would have been a failure at Not according his trade. to him. Not according no, to him. No, not at a trade that he was known for. Yeah. He can be doing something else, but mm -hmm. it is, is a failure. Well, as yeah. an when we're talking about failure, we're still talking about failure in life or success no, in no, life. No, no, no. The reason no, why we're saying what we're saying, you bring, yeah, the example, the you example said. you're bringing Because you said yeah, if yeah, someone so. like Funke Akidele fails because she's so talented, yeah. she should be able to pick, pick herself, herself up. Yeah, but we're saying, in, well, that's not always true because in the case of this guy, he didn't pick himself back up in that industry. He picked himself back up in life to make sure that he could put stuff on the table for his family. Yeah. And he was doing something that he probably didn't want to do. Imagine being an actor and everyone's mm -hmm. seeing you on TV every day and everyone knows who you are. Mm -hmm. And then grew, suddenly... Everybody grew up watching you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact is, that success that he got from that time mm -hmm. is still what made people come back and realise who he was. Mm -hmm. But he never really, like realised that he could That's go back. Saying. It wasn't priority for him. So if it's priority for you, he would have done something. I'm not and if it wasn't plan. priority for him, he would mm -hmm. probably turn down these gigs and be like, no, no, no this I'm is for him. At the end of the day, it's about money. I That's what I'm saying. I because if you really wanted to, I think with all of his contacts at that back, time, back, back in that story, time. Back but anyway, story. I completely disagree with you. I think on based okay. on your example, that's like he's a complete example of something that's someone that's done opposite of that. But anyway, I think the concept of failure in itself is very, very relative. Like mm -hmm. what you might consider a failure is not what I would mm -hmm. consider a failure. And some people, like I said, the most successful people have failed over hundreds of. They tell you like the story yeah. to success is about failure. Yeah. Because then for you to fail and pick yourself back up over and over Especially again like in business yeah business and act, and something like this like mm -hmm. acting music because i mean there's always the room for failure and the room to like you know continuously uh, people always want you to succeed and you don't mm -hmm. so i think i mean yeah i can understand why she she's scared of failure but i think um in that industry you have to be able to understand and accept failure if you want to succeed mm -hmm. now moving on to the poverty thing um, I think everyone is scared of poverty, but once again, poverty is relative. Poverty in Nigeria is completely different for poverty in, I don't know, Germany. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think abject poverty is different mm -hmm. to, you know, like mediocre poverty, just making ends meet. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing because she's lived a certain kind of life and has worked for a certain kind of um, a time that she can acquire certain things, that almost now she's scared of not having anything. I think, I'm I think going, I'm truly that's that. everybody's biggest failure. Having something and not being able to have it again and not knowing how you're gonna have it again is definitely something that everyone can relate to. Uh -huh. I don't know about you guys, but that's, yeah, sure. I mean, that is something everyone can. I mean, even when you lose your phone, mm -hmm. like, and you suddenly don't have access to what you had access to before, you can't do certain things, you suddenly feel very, very sad, like, even though it's just the phone, do you know what I mean? So. I mean, not being able to have what you had before. I think that's relative, too. Oh, is it because you've lost your phone? <laughs> <laughs> Ife, you haven't said a Because I'm not sad. You're not sad? <laughs> no. You don't feel left out? No, I don't. You don't feel like... Matter of fact, I feel a lot relieved okay, right but when now it initially because... happened, it was an earache? Mm, for a while, yeah, maybe. So you... OK, well, that's probably... That's what yeah. I said. It's, it's depending. Well, that's what I said as well. I want you yeah, to say one... Think. Give me one sentence, one line regarding um, this before uh, About Funke Akindele, I think yeah. um, this is just coming off the back of um, MI um, saying his fears and a lot of people are being vocal about what they're scared of in in line with fighting depression to get people to come out. So you see our favorite celebrities telling us their fears. So you know that, look, what I'm going through is what these people are also going through and they're human as well. So I think um, more celebrities should come out, tell us their fears, tell us what they're going through, tell us their stories. Mm -hmm. I think this might motivate a lot of your followers and fans to do the same and overcome theirs. All right, thank you very much. Time for another break. When we come back, it will be time for another interesting conversation on MI Abaga. That's when Tea Time on Plus TV Africa returns. It's where the big stories live. This is Plus TV Africa. When I did it, I was full on, hands on, on the whole project. So how did you that deal with it? All of that negative. I got depressed, obviously. Of duh. Haven't you heard? I've got two of the hottest topics currently trending on social media. If you've seen the word Senate trending on Twitter, that's because the Nigerian police force has gone Trump style. I probably I haven't shared this with anyone, but I reckon I get about like a hundred people asking for help a day. That's a fact. I can prove that.
Welcome back. It's still tea time right here on Plus TV Africa, and we're swiftly moving on to our next story. Emi Abaga has revealed how he battled with emotional and personal self-esteem issues. Okay, so uh, let me go first then. <laughs> Why do you want me to go first all of a sudden? Anyway, um, I think this is... Do you know what, right? We've seen a lot of this, you know, I'm going through depression from a lot of celebrities lately, mm -hmm. which is great. There's a lot of awareness around it and who better to start it than people that everybody follows, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really good that he's coming out to say this now um, and he's, you know, he's shared his struggles. But I have a theory. I don't, okay, no, scrap that. I don't have a theory. I think... I'm just going to play devil's advocate. No, but hold on. Um, uh, a theory on uh, MI or a theory about what's going on. About what's going on. Why don't you share? I am going to share, but I, I take it back. It's not a theory. I'm just playing okay. devil's advocate now. Okay, okay. I do not believe in this. I'm just playing okay. devil's advocate. Okay. Do you think that this could just be a thing whereby people are saying this to garner attention? No. Okay, now I'm going to come to MI's defence on this one. And I appreciate the fact you said you're just playing there for the advocate. If you had listened to his new album, Young Denzel, there's a particular track, um, Self Esteem, something about self esteem. So it's for him to put that in a song. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to that song, it was advising people not to look down on themselves, don't be starstruck, don't be, you get things like that, just be yourself. So obviously, for, when I was listening to it, I knew from the start that, okay, this is something that M.I. himself must, have gone, must have gone through. Because if you listen to the lyrics, mm -hmm. you would know that. And um, him coming out to say this now, it just made a, a whole lot of sense. Like, oh, now I get it. Mm -hmm. So it's like people have listened to the album, and maybe somebody has that figured it out like me, I'd asked him, and then he came out to okay. talk All about right, like, it. Well, let me give yeah. you my own theory, and then you can accept or decline, you know, depending on as the case may be. But I think that life generally brings this to everyone. But like with Me Too movement, because one person has come out, everyone is now beginning, oh, I went through that, I need to come out. Oh, mm -hmm. I went through that, let me come out. So like, you know, it happened with Me Too, and everyone was coming out at the same time. I think just because one person has come out, everyone now remembers, oh, I also had a similar circumstance, and as a result, I think that's why they're all coming out now. To and that's why and I said I was like just playing devil's advocate because mm -hmm. I don't believe that the people are doing it for attention or publicity stunts. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely believe, like you've just not rightly pointed out, that when one person talks about it, especially in a society where people don't like talking about mental health, mm -hmm. if one person can come out and make it seem like, look, you know, it started off with what, T-bills? Or mm -hmm. did someone else, well, let's just say it started off with T-bills. Yeah. Then after T-bills, it was um, ha well, Harry Song. No, 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 no. Mo. Was it Mo? Mo Cheddar. After Mo Cheddar, it was then... Sonny Rebel. Sonny the, Rebel, the, Harry a Song. Them, yeah. A lot of them. Um, a YJ. Lot of YJ. YJ. They've all come out to start saying it. And I think it's because suddenly our people are now talking about things that we never used to talk about. And if a celebrity is talking about it, then the average person on the street can say, look, I'm going through this as well. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with it? So I think it's absolutely great that everybody's being open about something that we're so close And it's about. okay for MI to come out. Why? Another reason why I believe this so strongly is because MI is somebody that um, if you been through his phase, you would know that um, it's he it could be depressed because M.I. came out with a bang. His yeah, first maybe. album was like the the deal mm -hmm. at that time. And then he didn't keep up to that and people started criticizing him. He was known as the best rapper. And then, and then there's then no big sudden, like industry for hip-hop. Yeah, yes, yeah, and he's a rapper. So it's understandable when someone like M.I. says he was depressed because you came out with a bang, everybody were getting accolades, accolades upon accolades, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden people don't appreciate your style of music. And then you're coming back now and maybe you feel a whole lot better. He had to become the uh, president of a record label and all of that to get his confidence back. He, you know, things like that. So it's allowed. But I do think leader. there's a general trend with celebrities and it's always not being able to live up to what you've started mm -hmm. that causes it. Going back to Von Kierkegaard's point mm -hmm. about failure, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the times that's what triggers it. We know that with Mo Cheddar, we know that with Harry Song, we know that with M.I. Like, we've seen it a lot that, you know, a lot of the times when... Um, and Wale, even in America, whenever yeah. all these um, celebrities come out, it's always to do with their lifestyle. You know, they can't maintain it as a result. Victor, was it Victor as well? Mm -hmm. You know, it's always to do with the fact that they can't maintain the success or the kind of um, image that they've already started, mm -hmm. that they've, they've created already. Mm -hmm. And usually, imagine, just put yourself in that position. Imagine everyone knows you and everyone is expecting so much from you. The pressure alone 
can make you fall into a, like a kind of yeah, a cycle of depression. Cold. So I think that's that is the real reason why we're seeing a lot of celebrities coming out. Yeah, that's what I say. Um, getting to the top is not the difficult part. It's staying, staying at, at the, the top. top. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, I think that's where we're going to wrap up on Tea Time right here. Join us this afternoon for fresh entertainment stories. Until then, a big thank you to my co-anchors, the entire production team as well. I'm Tukumbo Taiwo saying thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.